So it's June 1st, 2020 as I filmed this video and if you live on planet Earth then you are probably currently being affected by the global pandemic that's going on right now known as COVID-19. Whether you're in lockdown or not, governments and health organizations around the world are encouraging social distancing to keep the virus at bay until it can actually be treated and that means staying at least six feet or two meters away from each other. But based on what we see from official numbers, the virus is still continuing to spread. Well, why is that? Well, that's because us as human beings engage in three types of social habits, if you will, and that actually prevents social distancing from working at maximum capacity. And even if you're watching this after the pandemic is over and there's no more encouragement of social distancing, if you can break these three habits, then you are just going to be able to prevent yourself from getting sick in the future. Aloha and welcome back to my channel guys. My name is Ella and I help you retrain your brain. If you're new here, welcome. I post videos every other Sunday about how you can turn your rock bottom into your breakthrough moment. So let's get right into habit number one that we can start breaking in order to help social distance a lot better. And that is touching objects of interest. So have you ever found yourself walking by something or at a mall or in a museum and you just like had this urge to touch things that you think are cool? Through researching for this video, I found that there are a few different reasons why people have an urge to touch something, um, but mostly it comes down to we have a need to feel satisfied. Think about the example of walking through a mall or walking through a museum. If you see something that piques your interest, you might want to actually go over and touch the fabric or put your fingers against the box to see what's behind the glass in the museum. That's because when we suspect something to be pleasurable, we need to do something to satisfy that suspicion. And when that suspicion is confirmed, then we get a little dopamine effect going on in a part of the basal ganglia called the caudate nucleus. I'm going to put a picture somewhere around the screen. So if you think about what a habit is, it is always a stimulus response activity. It is always an if this, then that procedure. And in the case of habit, that response or that then that part of the procedure is always an expected dopaminergic effect. So when you see something that you expect is going to feel good, you expect that you are going to get a dopaminergic effect from touching it, your brain wants to close that habit loop and you are going to actually go and automatically go reach for whatever that pleasurable thing is. I'm actually going to take a much deeper dive into the if this then that effect of habit in an upcoming video so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe by hitting the button below. Brick and mortar stores actually use this tactic in order to get people to buy their products. A study out of the University of Ohio showed that by touching something we gain a sense of ownership or a feeling of ownership that actually makes us want to buy that thing and those feelings can only take up to 30 seconds to actually arise. Think about that next time you go shopping. So what do we do to stop that bad habit when there is a threat of COVID-19? Well, you have to remember that bad habits are not broken through inaction, they are broken through acting differently. So my recommendation is to be holding on to something while you're shopping or while you're walking that does feel good already. So that could be the inside of your pockets if they're fuzzy or putting a cotton ball inside your pockets and holding on to that or even just trying to keep your hands clasped together or holding onto a purse or a bag. The second habit that you can break to optimize your social distancing is stop touching your face. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that humans touch their faces a ridiculous amount of times per day. I actually found a study which I'm going to link below that says humans touch their face up to 23 times per hour. A 2019 study found that when we have an itch, whether that be from hair brushing up against our face or dust or whatever it may be, that triggers a response that is similar to pain and we want to do something to get rid of that feeling. I also found in my research, and I really want to make this point clear, that pain and itch are likely not transmitted via the same neural pathways. I'm going to put the part in the research paper that I found saying that quote and I want to make that clear because in my research I actually found a blog post that basically said that pain and itch are the exact same thing and they even cited the exact same research article I found. So please remember there's a lot of misinformation out there 
and if you are getting your research from other blog posts you need to make sure the sources that they are citing are accurate otherwise go directly to that source itself read through the research article and then come to your own conclusion so back to the idea of habits being a stimulus response procedure when we feel an itch we want to scratch because we need to get rid of that feeling or sensation and feel pleasure again. The scratch feels good because we learn to expect the temporary relief from the pain. This expectation of a relief of pain again makes the itch scratch habit a stimulus response habit. This expectation of a relief of pain as mentioned previously makes the scratch itch behavior an if then habit. So how do we stop touching our faces? Well there's a few things you can do. Number one, you can actually prevent the itch from occurring in the first place. I know you can't do this 100% but if you have long hair for example, take it away from your face so you don't find it blowing and rubbing against your skin. You can make sure your skin is exfoliated and completely moisturized so there's no dry flaky skin causing you any itches. Secondly, you can put something on your hands to remind yourself to not touch your face. So for example, I could paint my nails or put on rings and when I do want to lift my hands up to scratch my face, I might see these things and remind myself not to do that. Again, that might actually leave the itch feeling unsatisfied. So if you have the willpower, you could just remind yourself that the itch will subside or try to focus your attention on something else. But if you remember, bad habits cannot be broken through inaction, only through acting differently. So if you can't focus your attention somewhere else and that doesn't help, then what I do is honestly like fan my face. <laughs> This is not medical advice, people, okay? Please tell me I'm not the only person who does this to, like, relieve an itch. This might actually be blowing germs towards me. I don't know, but it helps. <laughs> By the way, if you guys are finding this video helpful, don't forget to take a screenshot, post it to your Instagram story, and don't forget to tag me so I can share your story, and don't forget to hashtag retrain your brain. Now, the third habit you can start breaking to improve your social distancing is wanting to be close with other people when you get excited. People are social beings and generally speaking when we see somebody we like we expect that being close to them or touching them or just that physical closeness is going to bring us some sort of pleasure and happiness. But when being close to somebody might cause you or them to spread an illness back and forth, we have to learn how to break that habit. So there are two things that I found work for me when I am doing this particularly when I am at work. So I'll start the conversation at a distance um, and I will anchor in on an inanimate object to make sure I remain that distance away from the person. So if I'm talking to somebody and I have a plant next to me. There is a plant next to me here, but just for example, there's a plant or a book or a bench next to me, then I want to constantly be making sure I am in line with that object and even so, maybe there's another bench or the other end of the bench is next to that person. I want to make sure they are remaining in line with that object as well. And you can even voice that to them if you're like super concerned. And the second thing that I do is I have just been trying to slow down. After every sentence or every sentence that the person says back to me, I will make sure at that moment, am I standing at a proper distance? Am I wearing my mask properly? Are my hands clasped together? I actually try to run through these things in my head when in conversation with somebody else. And of course, these things are difficult to do, especially when our brain wants to go down the habitual route. But just by slowing down, you become more aware of the things that you need to say. It's easier to become mindful of your behavior. So try just slowing down and after every single sentence, take a pause and run through those questions in your head to make sure you are standing a distance away. You are anchored in on an object. You are covering your face with a mask, for example. And when you do take those pauses and you confirm that you're doing those things, like yes, I'm standing six feet away, you might actually be able to initiate that dopaminergic response just by pausing and sort of patting yourself on the back for doing the right thing. Dr. Andrew Huberman of Huberman Labs on social media is actually working on this research right now where he says that you can initiate the dopaminergic effect on your own 
as you pursue a goal simply by stopping, pausing, and sort of giving yourself a pat on the back, so to speak. So try doing that out because again, remember, you cannot break a bad habit through inaction, you have to be acting differently. I am going to put a link to a YouTube interview with Dr. Andrew Huberman down in the description box below if you want to check it out. All in all, just remember, slow down, act differently, be mindful of your behavior and try and initiate that dopaminergic response on your own. And if you can do those three things, I'm pretty sure you will be able to improve your social distancing. I know these are things that I practice every day. So as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Don't forget to make this the year of you and stay sanitary, my friends. <laughs> Bye.